My name is Eugene Davidovich, and uh, I'm here today with Bahar Ansari, who is uh, my attorney, um, to tell you a little bit about my case. Some of you may have heard about my case out there, the medical marijuana case pending against me right now. Um, but just very briefly, I have grown up here in San Diego since I was a very little kid. I've gone to elementary school here, middle school, high school, after which I joined the United States Navy and served honorably for four years aboard the USS John S. McCain, forward deployed to Yokosuka, Japan. While aboard that ship, we did two Gulf deployments uh, into the Persian Gulf, um, as well as numerous other campaigns in support of our efforts overseas. Since getting out of the United States military honorably and with two Navy Achievement Medals, I successfully finished my bachelor's degree in business as well as my MBA. After completing my MBA, uh, and prior to that, I had been working as a software development project manager full time. I'm also a medical cannabis patient and have been using medical cannabis ever since I got out of the military um, to alleviate some of the symptoms which I suffer from every single day. Um, as a part of being a medical cannabis patient, I was a member of a collective. We all got together, we cultivated the medication, we distributed amongst ourselves. And in last year, actually in the very beginning of last year, in February, I was arrested charged with four felonies, my house was raided, dragged off to jail, and I'm now a year later still facing trial. It was an undercover officer that joined my collective who had a legitimate recommendation from his physician. He went to his doctor, lied about his symptoms, lied about his condition, obtained a valid recommendation from his doctor for medical cannabis with which he joined my collective. I took down all of his information, called the doctor to verify, ensured that he was a legitimate patient and could join the collective, after which I delivered medical cannabis to him. Three months later, I was raided, arrested, and now being charged with four felonies. It's been a year now. Yesterday, I was in court for a motion to dismiss one of the charges against me that they had added a week before my trial was supposed to start. And Bahar Ansari was in court with us that day, yesterday. Um, the ruling did not go in my favor. We lost the motion. Bahar, can you tell us a little bit about what happened? How did the judge rule? And what kind of a, if not precedent, what kind of a path does this lay for other cases in this courthouse? Sure. <clears throat> well, the judge, uh, unfortunately, as you said, Eugene, denied the motion, uh, and I believe he did so erroneously. Uh, Proposition 215, the Compassionate Use Act, uh, grants a limited immunity to qualified patients from prosecution under uh, or for possession of marijuana as well as transportation, uh, I'm sorry, cultivation of marijuana. Uh, the new charge that was added was uh, possession of 14 grams of concentrated cannabis in the form of hash. Uh, the prosecute, well, let me say, let me say this first. Um, uh, to prevail at a 995 hearing, which is a motion to dismiss um, for lack of probable cause, um, the defendant has to show, according to a, a well-settled uh, Supreme Court, California Supreme Court opinion called People v. Maurer, the defendant has to show that uh, he or she is a qualified patient, and once the defendant does that, the burden then shifts to the prosecution to, uh, to show some evidence that the amount that the defendant possessed was not a reasonable amount given the, the patient's medical conditions. Um, at Eugene's preliminary hearing, there was uh, evidence that he was is a qualified patient in the form of his physician statement. Uh, there was no evidence to the contrary offered at the preliminary hearing. Uh, the, despite that, the judge uh, ruled that, agreeing with the prosecutor basically, that the uh, the issue of whether it was a reasonable amount is one for the jury that needs to be decided at trial. Um, and that is directly contrary to uh, the California Supreme Court's holding in People versus Maurer. Um, it, by doing that, in effect, what the judge did is to uh, basically um, uh, nullify, for lack of a better word, this grant of limited immunity that the Supreme Court has clearly stated um, was created by the Compassionate Use Act. Um, and that is very unfortunate, uh, not just for Eugene, but for all patients, um, because if judges, other ju trial court judges rule the same way, then uh, these, t these cases that, you know, 
should not be even reaching the stage of trial because the, the person is a qualified patient and had the legal right to possess their medicine, uh, it, th these cases are going to end up continuing to trial and that's going to obviously cost uh, you know, the, the patient great stress, both emotional stress, financial stress, um, and it's, uh, in my opinion, a waste of uh, our taxpayer money and resources. Um, and it's particularly in Eugene's case, I, I, I just find this whole, this whole prosecution um, to be very, very unfair and uh, tragic given um, who Eugene is. I, I've come to know Eugene over the past few months and in, in addition to just being a, a wonderful person, a very giving and a selfless person uh, who spends incredible amounts of time uh, advocating on behalf of patients um, and all of our rights. Um, he uh, also, as he stated earlier, served in the Navy uh, for four years, uh, was on two uh, Persian Gulf deployments, um, and served our country very honorably. And this is the reward he gets, and I, I find that um, very, very unfortunate. Yeah. Thank you, Bahar. I think that over these 13 months, now I could be wrong about the numbers, but well over $100,000 has been spent on prosecuting my case. We have the judge's salaries, the district attorney's salaries, the uh, uh, bailiffs, the court proceedings, and all the other expenses associated with it has, I believe, reached well beyond $100,000. And when the voters of California passed Proposition 215 14 years ago, I assure you folks that they did not intend on having patients dragged through court in order to figure out and clarify a law which should be clarified and figured out in the legislature and not by dragging patients to the court. In 13 months, I have not yet even seen the evidence, all the evidence against me in this case. Um, the district attorney's office has gone above and beyond everything that they can do to ensure that they convict me, including putting my name on the high profile list of the district attorney's website, ensuring that I wouldn't find good employment here in San Diego since my arrest. Um, I personally have spent tens of thousands of dollars on my defense. Um, I'm very lucky to have Bahar, who has agreed to represent me uh, pro bono in this case. Um, and I, I just want to say that all the people who are currently facing charges here in San Diego or anywhere in California, they need to stand up for their rights. You should not take plea bargains. You should take your case to trial, and you should absolutely affirm and assert your right to use medical cannabis because this has been legal for over 13 years. It will continue to be legal in California. And unless all of us stand up, not take any plea bargains, and fight against the system, the law won't be respected. The law won't be uh, exercised here the way that it should be. I encourage you to join your local organizations like Americans for Safe Access, help other patients, advocate for each other, and stand up to this uh, illegal persecution of patients. The district attorney, Bonnie Dumanis, has been doing this since 2003. This uh, Operation Green RX must come to an end, and we will bring it to an end.